Oh uh, yes, Siddha Swarupananda. Well, he, was, he wasn't named Siddha Swarupananda. He was named Siddha Swarup. And he had a few hundred disciples. <coughs> they took initiation from him. And then he surrendered to Prabhupada and Prabhupada gave him sannyas with the title Siddha Swarup Ananda. I know. Yeah. So his disciples all became ISKCON members and the GBC was totally freaked out because he had such a loving and excellent relationship with his followers that the GBC did not even want to have such a nice relationship. So uh, they were very jealous of him and they did everything they could to get him out and eventually they got him out. But um, Prabhupada's view was because he already had so many disciples, somebody said, well, shouldn't these all be reinitiated by you? And Prabhupada said, no, if they are, I saw this in a letter that got destroyed in a Volkswagen that I kind of crashed with, but um, it wasn't the letter to me. It said, if, if they are surrendered to him and he surrendered to me, then what's the difference? Yeah, there were some conversations in Mayapur when Prabhupada was there, there were some disputes because Siddha Sarup Prabhu was a natural leader because he had so much disciples and they wanted Siddha Sarup Prabhu to, or Maharaj or whatever you want to call him, they wanted, yeah, the, the GBC wanted to control him. So he was not so much in in their zone kind of thing. You know, he, he was very, you know, he was a leader, natural leader, on, on that account, and Prabhupada, they were having a discussion. It, it's pretty, it got pretty heated. And Guru you know, was, the GVC was not a GVC. They had no business controlling anybody. Yeah, so... If you go by the direction of management, their job is to serve the new temples and yeah. to help sort out problems amongst existing temples. Right. They're, not try, they're not supposed to be controlling anybody. Yeah, Vinay Prabhu was a better GBC than they were. Right, right, right. Vinay Prabhu, you heard about that conversation or did you hear that? It was a morning walk conversation where yeah. you heard, right? I heard Who the be? conversations of oh. him and Prabhupada in Mayapur and in Vrindavan also. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. I, I got to know Siddha Swarup Ananda in Vrindavan, in Mayapur. And, and he and I got along very, very well, as you might imagine. Mm. I recognized who he was, he recognized who I am. So we got along great. But I could see he was in great distress because he came to surrender to Prabhupada not to be manhandled by a bunch of people that didn't have the slightest qualifications that he had. Right, right, yeah. That's the problem when you want to be in charge of everything is that you have to have the qualities to give those constituents the value, some value that they are deserving. Not just that you have some raw power and then you control people and you take people that are more advanced than you are and try to turn them into uh, servants and slaves. Yeah, that's a very good thing. Uh, I mean, that's a very good point that you have made that people who are coming to Krishna consciousness, some of them are very advanced living entities. You know, who knows? They, they might be much more advanced than us, but if we treat them wrongly or, you know, they, it's, it, it's a big uh, disaster, right? Well, yeah, because if they're very humble and very sincere and really want Prabhupada, they'll take all sorts of crap from the leaders. Right, but right, in, right. In their heart, they will wonder why are the leaders of this pure devotee giving me crap? Right. Unless they have to think the unthinkable, maybe they're not really leaders and they just simply took over the movement. Yeah. But then they think, wait, Prabhupada was here when they were taking over the movement. It must have been with his permission. And that's where it gets tricky because I would say it was not with his permission. He allowed the GBC to run wild over him, to, to manipulate him and control him so that he could open temples and make a lot of disciples so that when we came along, we can sort this out and bring it to where it's supposed to be. Mm. Certainly, the GBC cannot even succeed another year or two, considering that they're fighting over FDGs. Right, right. 
So Prabhu, like uh, that time, like uh, uh, when Sit Sarupananda Maharaj, he left his con afterwards. So did some of his followers came to his con and re-initiated by Srila Prabhupada? Who? Ananda? Uh, Sit Sarupa Maharaj. Sit Sarup yeah. Maharaj. Yes. You know, the, the Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, she is a grand disciple of Sita Saru. Oh. Did you know? No. Are you serious? No. Seriously? She's the grand dis grandchild. Grand disciple. Grand disciple. Her, okay. her father was initiated by Sita Saru, and she was born into it, like the way children are born into it. Acha, acha, got it, bro. But you may be pleased to know that she was the first congressperson or government official in the United States ever sworn into office, swearing her on a copy of Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita as it is. Jaya. Jaya, Prabhupada. Jaya. So she's done more Jaya. than everybody. People complain about her. The devotees complain about her because she's not weak and powerless and stupid like them. But uh, I mean, they've become, they're not stupid. They're all sensitive, great devotees, but they've been disempowered. They've been, have their arms and legs and skin and hair and eyeballs taken out. And then they say, what sort of person are you now? Well, what did you do to that to those people for? You should let them grow and thrive and become powerful in their own right. Don't be jealous of them. Don't try to keep them down. Bring them, let them come up. Good, isn't that fair enough? So Tosi Gabbard is, is in that line of Siddha Swarup, Ananda. And he, he, he was very intense, very intelligent. He, was to, he knew Kundalini Yoga, you know? Uh, I have heard, heard the name Kundalini, but I don't know what that thing is. Oh, Kundalini, it's a way of raising the, uh, the, your, your, your life force, raising from the lower chakras up through your spine to your crown chakra. It's a yogic process. If you don't do it right, he didn't do it right, and I also didn't do it right, but when he did it, he came and instead of coming up his spine, it left big burn marks on his spine. It burned holes in his spine. Mm. Oh. So he's he's an extraordinary person, but um, all they wanted to do was to divide them all up. And of course, because they were plotting to become Prabhupada's initiating successors, they were worried, how can these people not be our disciples? when the time comes. So like, uh, if practically speaking, like Siddha Swarupa Nanda Maharaj was one of the Prabhupada's disciple who was having his own disciples and who was not fallen. And Prabhupada agreed to him having yeah. disciples. Yeah. Well, sort of. I mean, they all, they all acted, they were his disciples, but because they, he surrendered to Prabhupada, they also surrendered to Prabhupada. They didn't worship him in a corner of the temple somewhere by themselves. They became regular ISKCON members. But their initiation was from Siddha Suru. Just like right now, you can go into a temple and you have just people are initiated by half a dozen, a dozen or two dozen or three dozen gurus. It's not that they all worship their guru in a different corner of the temple. They just do the whole program themselves, you know chant to the, to the deities and go to class and whatnot. So th th that's what they were doing. They were there. I became good friends with many of them. Mm. So like uh, they, are, they are also having kind of disciplic succession or they are following same Ritwik system of initiating? Culture? I don't know. I haven't followed, the, followed all of that. Yeah, but like if they are following regulatory principles, worshipping Prabhupada, then it's fine, I think. Yeah. Well, whether they're following the principles and worshipping Siddha Sarup, who's worshipping Prabhupada, 
or worshiping Prabhupada directly, it's the same thing if you know how to do it right. Mm. But unfortunately, it's kind of with the GBC were so crude and so mean that they um, they did not allow they did not allow Prabhupada to be guru, but to speak of anybody else. <laughs> So what are we up? What are we up to? Uh, Vinak Prabhu, do you want to ask any more questions or share your realization? I think you were because we should get uh, to that paper if we can. Sure. Yeah. No, Vinak was uh, asking, so I thought to let him. Uh... No, 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 it's good. Okay, now we can go to the paper. One second. Yeah. The whole thing, Vinak, is that I wrote this paper largely with you in mind because I know that you were very perplexed by the conversation last night, as was I. I wanted to ask some questions about what we do as the League for 10K, and I kept hearing all of this dump, dump truck loads of garbage being thrown out, you know? So, mm -hmm. so this is an attempt to clear that up, and Vinayak Prabhu, please let me know if you agree with the points. These are the points we have been saying, you know. Yes, Prabhu, I completely agree. Well, you haven't seen it yet, right? Yeah, I've read uh -huh. it. I've read it. You, that, read, uh, you read it? Yeah, Ram Chandra Prabhu has just shown the slides. So It'd be nice if you can uh, somehow get me your email address, and then I can CC you when I write things, if you like. Yeah, I'm just... Uh, Okay, just tax it to him, Prabhu. So let's continue. Yeah, this. Yes. Okay, go ahead. All right. Yeah. I'm, I shared my email. Okay, yes. I'll send it to Narayan Prabhu. Or you can send it to him on WhatsApp. Oh, okay, Either number one. one. You can send it, Ramachandran. Okay, yes. so let's go. Okay, number one. The League for 10K is held on an Easter Goshti platform. That means that all participants are considered equal all members of the Ishta part participate as jivas, not embodied Kanishta Adhikaris thinking, feeling, and willing from an embodied material platform and are expected to leave. I would very much like it if, if Jaina Ryan were hearing this. Well, he's not here, so, you know. Well, Where is he? He's in his car. Oh. Okay, so let me start again. All members of the Ishta Goshti participate as jivas, not embodied Kanishta Adhikaris, thinking, feeling, and willing from the embodied material platform and are expected to leave the three gunas to the side before participating. Okay. Uh, yeah, any but, questions uh, or any uh, philosophical it, points? The word is I want you to handle all the questions. I, sure, yeah, sure. I want to avoid it if I can. I want you to handle it because you're intelligent. So you're saying here all members of the Ishta Goshti participate as jivas, spirit souls, not embodied Kanishta Adhikaris, thinking, feeling, and willing from the embodied material platform and are expected to leave the three gunas to the side before participating. So what do you mean by leaving the three gunas aside? Because the living entity is conditioned by the three modes of material nature. Uh, yeah, not you can, like when you're in a kirtan, you can either be sitting there sweating away in your body, or you can let go and dance in ecstasy. Oh, okay. That's what you when mean. You okay, that's... Ecstasy, you're leaving the gunas behind. The whole point of kirtan is to become free from near guna, to have no gunas. Mm -hmm. and that's what kirtan is, is released from the gunas. So sure. our goal is that when we go to Istagosti, we don't come here with an agenda that we're trying to push uh, or complaints we're trying to make or anger that we're trying to express. We're trying to create a positive thing. So go ahead. Uh, Vinayak Prabhu, anything you want to say or Mohit from Mahap Prabhu? Any? No Prabhu, it's clear to me. Okay. You totally blank on target, no issues. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. The unique standard for participation in the Zoom call is to speak as far as possible as a jiva and to address other League for 10K members as jivas as well. Yeah, I mean, when are the living entities not spirit souls? <laughs> well, that's a very good point. 
Right. So when so I had a conversation yesterday before the Zoom meeting huh. where John Iran absolutely entrenched himself that he's has no idea of spirit soul, that he just sees himself as three gunas in the body. So I wrote this for his benefit as well, but he can see it later. Go ahead. Yeah, that I mean, that point you just said about uh, Prabhu is uh, how can, I mean, if someone has some intelligence, they can see that they're not these bodies. The bodies are changing from boyhood to youth to old age. So, and then eventually everyone has seen a dead body, right? And how can they think they are this body? Is that true for every spe every human and every other species as well? Everybody is going through these changes, and yet they're surprised when they die. Yeah, what kind of conditioning is that? It seems like, you know, uh, it doesn't make sense to me, at least. It well, makes sense. For devotees should at least be willing to say, yes, I am spirit soul. And I'm saying, let's talk from spirit soul. Oh, no, no, I'm too conditioned, you know, like that. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. No, we have to, I mean, I have the greatest respect for intelligent people, and he is an intelligent person, but where do, where do we get from there? It's almost like I said yesterday, atheism. How do, how do you get past the fact that I don't acknowledge that God exists or that the soul exists as part and parcel of God? That has to be at least a give lip service to that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if we pretend to believe it, but instead it becomes more like religion or Catholic church where you believe what you're taught in the catechism in the in the um in the in the in the sunday school and if you accept that then that's all you need to do you don't have to think of that at all zero so okay okay keep going okay vinayak prabhu anything you want to say or uh... no prabhu please continue okay this unforeseeable Standard will enable us to think, feel, and act beyond time and space. Unenforceable. Oh, un okay. This unforceable standard will enable us to think, feel, and act beyond time and space. This standard is based on the simple fact that we are all eternal spirit soul and that we will take many, many births before we can progress from Kanishta Adhikari to Madhya Madhikari platform and then crowning success, the Uttama Adhikari platform, which requires that we will have reached our eternal rasa with Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan. Okay. You can do uh, it in an instant. My question is, are you going to do it in an instant or may it take a little more time? Yeah. Okay. Try. Does that? Is there anything with which you take issue there? So let me read that again. This standard will enable us to think and act beyond time and space. So this point you're making here that if we understand that we're spirit souls, time and space won't matter because. We can understand that our bodies are changing, but we are not these bodies. Right. And we do, when we're talking and thinking, if you really, if you go to the movies and you get completely caught up in the what's on the screen, yes, you can be sitting there and your shirt can be falling off and you won't notice it because you're so focused on the action on the screen. So similarly, when you're concentrating on being spirit soul, you can concentrate on that, not thinking a lot about whether or not you're hungry or not hungry, or you mm. have to use the bathroom or not use the bathroom or, or, or button your shirt or not button your shirt like that, you know? Yeah. All these material considerations. Right. right. Jai. I mean, if you look at Krishna's pastimes, uh, at least with Lord Brahma, when he stole the cowherd boys, uh, a long time had passed, you know, him taking yeah. them. And it seemed when they came back, like, you know, uh, it was beyond time and space, right? Yes, of course. So they were, that's, 
that's kind of what you're that's what you're saying here. Say okay, which the point is here. <laughs> the standard will enable us to think and act beyond time and space. So Krishna's pastime that occurred at that time, the cowherd boys thought it was just a moment, but a lot of time had passed. Yeah, maybe millions of years. No, yes, I mean, yes. You can't measure that sort of. You can't measure the time of Brahma for sure. Jai, okay. Okay. The questions. Now we're at the questions. Anyone else they want to give a realization or philosophical point? Prabhus? Be free to do so. I don't want to interrupt. Just come out with your ideas. I think Ramachandra, your comments are excellent. Feel, feel free to share your realizations at any time, Prabhu. Or doubts. doubts. Or doubts also, yeah. Or doubts. Hitta Gosi means you can express doubt. In fact, that's one of the qualities of Hitta Gosi. It's a place where you can express doubt. So if one says that... Atmosphere, you should be able to resolve it. Yeah. I mean, not just your doubts. Think for the other person, someone else who might be new listening, they might have that yeah. question, you know, like exactly. we just not think for ourselves. Let's think from all angles. You know? Yeah. A, a person, uh, let's see. What do you mean by, uh, you said that, you said that uh, uh, Uttam Adhikari platform or can be achieved at once or fast. So what what do you mean by fast or taking some time? Meaning, you know, we can understand I'm, this. I'm sorry, I, I can't quite hear what you're saying. I'm saying you at one point said in the conversation that that can be, the Uttamadakari platform can be attained immediately. Right? In which way it can be done immediately? Well, no. Because your spirit is its soul. Hmm. Okay. So, it, there's, did I say that it could be attained immediately? Here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, where does it say that? No, no, no. Not in this, when we were talking in this video. Oh, yeah. No, it can be obtained. It can be obtained immediately. But will it be obtained immediately? Oh, oh yeah. No, I said that. I think I wrote it here. Uh, that the the Prabhupada says you can immediately become a pure devotee. Yes. So people said, okay, I want to immediately become a pure devotee. So you're going, now the secret is by hearing the Maha Mantra, it's the golden, it's the touchstone, the block of touchstone. You hear the holy name, you're already liberated. The question, okay, so when can I go and play with Krishna and Vrindavan? When you give up your material attachment. Hmm. You could do that immediately, or you could take it after a hundred thousand births, whichever works for you. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. In other words, what we don't, we think that going back to God it depends on Krishna. It doesn't. It has nothing to do with Krishna. Going back to God it depends on us. Lord Chaitanya, Yuga Avatar gave us the holy name. The rest is up to us. Mm -hmm. Like we have a god brother in India who wants to chant 64 rounds because he wants to go back to Godhead and he doesn't want to wait around. He just he wants to go back as soon as possible at the end of this lifetime at the latest. And he likes that idea. But will it work? Is that what Krishna in Krishna Loka wants to feel? coming from a person that wants to associate with him. Does the person wanting to associate with him have a greedy motive? Oh, I want to be with Krishna because Krishna is so opulent. I'd love to be around Krishna's opulence. Why would Krishna be attracted to that mentality? He wouldn't, you see. Hmm. If you want, everything depends on the jiva. Going back to God. And it depends on Prabhupada. He's a jiva. He gave us the means to go back to Godhead by chanting, and look what they did with it for 50 years. Right. They made it a miserable affair for 50 years. Sure. Okay. 
Okay, so now let's move on to the questions. We're at the first question, number one. <coughs> How do you plan to uphold and see the ISKCON <coughs> represented 5,000 years from now? So number one question, how do you plan to uphold and see ISKCON represented 5,000 years from now? What format do you plan ISKCON to have 5,000 years from now? Okay, there's two questions. Number one, how do you plan to uphold and see ISKCON represented 5,000 years from now? So my question is that whatever is going on in the present day, hijacked version of ISKCON, whatever you want to call it, ISKCON or ISKCON not, not the real ISKCON. Just look at that. I mean, just look at that. And then okay. see what is missing, missing from that. Do you feel that what's going on right now with the female diksha guru saying the GBC the way it is, the ICC the way it is, the uh, Bureau the way it is, do you see that as being still like that in 5,000 years? Yes. <laughs> you do? No, no. I'm asking the question to our viewers online who might be watching. You know? Oh, I see. I you, mean, we can see Srila Prabhupada. I, I'd be surprised if it can last another two or three years without <laughs> a major theological shift. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. If, if you study. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. So let me ask that question again. How do you yeah. plan to uphold and see ISKCON represented 5,000 years from now? So that will require some thinking. You know, what Prabhupada actually wanted? What does he want from us? What do, does he want for from, you know, the leaders? How he had it set up? So it requires some, uh, you know, some research at least. Right? To go well, back. Yes. And the interesting part is we don't have to do any research into the Vedas or, or into Shastras and stuff like that. Yes. All we have to do is go back to where Prabhupada started and just not deviate one footstep from it. Jai. In other words, whatever he said, we do it. The big one, of course, is the direction of management. Well, they're all big ones, but the direction of management is huge because it either enables or prevents ISKCON from becoming a huge international movement of freely, free autonomous devotees. Hmm. Because if each temple is independent, then each temple will be the ISKCON center. And what happens in an ISKCON center? Who's in charge of it? Well, you chant Hare Krishna, you distribute prasadam, you go, do the morning program, you follow the regulated principles. That's all you need to do. You don't need a big political structure. In fact, you can't have a big political structure because there's no scope for it. Prabhupada made no provision for a big political structure. Right. And if anyone says Prabhupada created the GBC, and that's a big political structure, I'm going to take it behind the woodshop and get them to the job like this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Maybe. Okay, keep going, keep going, because we have more to go. Yes. We want to make sure we get through it all. Yes. Is, 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 okay, so be satisfied. So be, you create the answer and be satisfied with it, okay? Yes. What format do you plan ISKCON to have 5,000 years from now? Well, my understanding or my experience has been with the local devotees here and then what we are discussing worldwide on our Ishtagoshti platform that with the different devotees we have dealt with, you know, every, you know, even the leaders are confused to a large degree of what, what to oh, do. Um, they have an illegal governing structure and they're trying to figure out how to make it work. Yeah. You know, yeah. even Nazi Germany had a more democratic structure than ISKCON has. Yeah. Where is the 
where is the obedience factor? They're trying to say, okay, we decided not to obey Prabhupada. Now, how do we make this work? So isn't that the sort of thing that you'd expect a person without much intelligence to ask? Yeah. Yeah. We decided not to do Prabhupada's way. Now we want to make it work. How do we make it work? And our friend in India who's, says, oh, Shastra, we have to go to Shastra. We'll read Shastra. Well, the problem with reading Shastra is if it isn't from Prabhupada, then how do you know it's bona fide? Okay. You know, how do you know it's genuine? How do you know it wasn't mistranslated? Whatever. You know, how do you know you can understand it either? So you can't do that. You can't go to Shastra. You have to go to your spiritual master. And now they have to face the fact that it's gone as it is right now rejected the spiritual master. Rejecting the direction of management means rejecting the spiritual master. And if we can all, you know, all of us, China, Ryan, all of us, me, you, everyone, because I oh, there was this over here and we were in Bombay and I met so and so Prabhu and we had nice kirtan and we had took prashadam. Yeah, but that is all residual. The principle was missing. Because the principle would have meant we would have hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of temples on the world right now if they accepted the direction of management and implemented it properly. Jai, yes. And we would have no centralized government of this kind. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's something that, you know, I kind of suffered through here in Sacramento. We, we have so much resources personally and collectively but yes. because because the GBC is not, uh, how can you say the, the direction of management is not being followed? Everything is in chaos. You know, we we could we, we, it all comes down to the, it's sort of like uh, what I said was if the child is being raised in the temple with the temple president, he becomes a GBC member, and then the child is old enough goes to Gurukula. If he hears of anyone touching a hair of the child. He will go there and kill them. He would not allow someone in his temple, man and woman and their child of this temple, to be harmed. But the minute that you have a corporate structure like the Catholic Church, the Vatican, that uh, then the number one job is protecting the organization at the expense of the children. Yes. Children can be disposed of and molested as long as nobody finds out about it. Because then our collection goes down. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, keep going, keep Number going. two. Will Srila Prabhupada be the Sampadaya Acharya from 1977 until the end of the golden age of Kali? All right. Will Srila Prabhupada be the Sampadaya Acharya from 1977 until the end of the Golden Age of Kali? And the alternative is, who will be the Acharya after Prabhupada? Or who will be the succession of female Diksha Gurus and then transvestite Diksha Gurus after Prabhupada? <laughs> the, the, Anyone? Is that, fairly, is that transparent enough, do you think? <laughs> it's, I shouldn't have said 1977. I, I should have said 1965 through 1977, and then after 1977. But I guess it's okay like that, because we're talking about successor guru. Yes. Okay. Anyone? Yeah, this... Uh, I've, I've noticed that anyone who... Well, that is answered in the Nectar of Instruction, verse 5, that the Kanishta and Madhyam can accept disciples, but the disciples must be on the same platform and they cannot advance very further because of the insufficient guidance given by these Kanishta, Adhikari, and Madhyam, Adhikari gurus. Yeah. So, you know, Madhyam, Adhikari, if he's doing anything aside from trying to become a pure devotee, if the Madhyam, Adhikari, like the, the yogi was, was burned his finger, in while sitting under a tree. If if the Madhya Madhikari takes the time, he can give a lot of advantage to the Kindasadikaris. But 
it's still called insufficient guidance because the only guidance that is not insufficient, that is sufficient, comes from the Uttama Adhikari, which means the only one we have ever had the opportunity to meet is Srila Prabhupada. Right. Okay. So there's no question, at least in my mind and our minds, that Prabhupada is that only Sampradaya Acharya, which who we will follow for the next 10,000 years. Exactly. I, 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 don't, I think it's a simple algorithmic use, manipulation of algorithms. Hmm. Just move the data around on the board, like in a widget board. Just move the data around and this is what you end up with. Yeah, at case, least. You don't have to have a knowledge of Shastra. All you have to do is know things like the law of probability. <laughs> the There's laws of probability will tell you that Prabhupada will be the Sampradaya Acharya because yeah. where else will you get one? <laughs> oh, we're going to make one out of whole cloth. We'll invent one. Fine. You can, you can go out and invent a new island in the middle of the ocean too if you like. But how are you going to do it? Impossible. <laughs> exactly. So, yes, I did. I'm your servant, so do what you like. Okay. Any devotees want to share any realizations at this point? We got... Uh, or we ask have, a question. Or ask questions, express the doubt. Vinayak Prabhu, Mahaprabhu... Disagree. Well, what? Does or disagree. disagree? That's why Jaina Ryan should be here. He can disagree. <laughs> okay. Um, or or Basu Ghosh can disagree. <laughs> All right. Number, number three. Will the leak for 10K achieve and duplicate each and every statement and standard given by given to us by Srila Prabhupada so that his standard will finally will be finally put in place as the very life and soul of Iskand? Let me read it one more time. Will the leak for 10K achieve and duplicate each and every statement? and standard given to us by Srila Prabhupada so that this standard will finally will be finally put in place as the very life and soul of ISKCON. It's sort of a clumsy statement, but what it means to say is, can we say we have enough material for 10,000 years from Prabhupada? Oh, Not only that from Prabhupada, but including Prabhupada. <coughs> Not that grandfather died and left me his watch. No. That we include Prabhupada in that mixture too. Okay, then we're at number four. Do we all agree that ISKCON actually ended in 1970 when the GVC refused to be humble servants of the independently incorporated ISKCON temples by rejecting the direction of management and by doing so, rejecting Srila Prabhupada as the Acharya of ISKCON. So this is basically saying Prabhupada wanted a system of how he wanted things done, a decentralized system which Prabhupada actually had written and signed in, uh, when was it? 1970, right? At the yes. San Francisco Ratiatra, it's written on legal paper and Srila Prabhupada signed it along with the different leaders, how Srila Prabhupada wanted the temples oh, to be managed. And a certain number of witnesses too. The witnesses too, yeah. So, so that is how, it's called the direction of management. And it's very simple to read and understand. It doesn't require any... Yeah, <laughs> word jugglery or any sort of um... all it requires is obedience. Yes. And at what point do we say that the disciple does not need to obey the spiritual master? <laughs> That's <laughs> right. I mean, <clears throat> if you look now, uh, coming back to the present, if you look at lives or at least our personal lives, if we didn't come in contact with Krishna consciousness, 
you know, we would be in, rotting in this material world. Yo, and, yo. Then, and, and then just after a few years after Srila Prabhupada passing, how can anyone think about, you know, you know, disobedience and then taking his position and acting in his position with insufficient knowledge, insufficient uh, everything, you know? Well, it's but like, the tr thing to remember is they openly declared to Prabhupada, you sit tight and translate books so we can sell them and mm -hmm. we will run the movement. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they did that in 1970. They actually told Prabhupada, we fired you. You're not in charge of ISKCON anymore. Right. You created ISKCON. Thank you very much. We know how to run it. It's a corporation. We know how to run corporations. Uh, we have corporate accountants like a tree right. chief. And we don't need to, we don't need you now. We can run the movement. You write the books <laughs> and we'll print the books and sell the books and we'll make the money. Yeah, yeah, this is the... Uh... Well, I mean, what else can you conclude? Were they not after money and power? <laughs> just, you know, just a few years before coming to ISKCON, they were, you know, doing the most abom ab abominable things. And now they're trying to hijack the movement. Yeah, or, they know. became puffed up, you know. It's like yeah. the professor, it's like the, uh, it's like the, the, Mouse and the yogi, right? Right, right. And then he comes a tiger, and then the tiger's looking at the yogi. Yum! And why are you looking at me like that? Oh, now that I've become a tiger, I think I'll eat you for lunch. Mm. I'm hungry. I want to eat. And you look pretty juicy and tasty. I'll eat you. <laughs> and the yogi got annoyed and said, then again become a mouse. And Drrr! the mouse ran off into the corner. He created the, the created the tiger, and then Jai. he became puffed up as a tiger, so again become a mouse. And Prabhupada likened that, that the device, disciple gets puffed up, again become a mouse. He loses his shakti and doesn't even know it. He still has his tridanda, he still has his garlands, he still has his uh, seat to sit on. How can he be a mouse? Right, right. How can he At the moment of death, it will become quite clear, of course, but <laughs> he's not thinking in terms of that because why would I die? I'm a youngish guy. I'll be a guru until I'm 95. Well, keep going. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm Where are we now? We're on number number four. Number four, do we all agree that ISKCON actually ended in 1970 when the GBC refused to be humble servants of the independently incorporated ISKCON temples by rejecting the direction of management and by doing so rejecting Srila Prabhupada as the Acharya of ISKCON? Well, right after the departure of Srila Prabhupada, they had many reforms, right? They had so-called the Acharya board and then the Acharya started falling down then the GBC stepped in and, you know, they did damage control and they, they demoted the Acharyas. You know, the, it's, it's a mess if you look at the history. So, well, yeah. And the interesting part is we don't, we should not, we should go on a diet and put a corset on our waist to make, keep our tummy in saying we don't care about 1977. It happened in 1970. The mm. end result was 1977. Jai. Yeah. The GBC ended up poisoning Prabhupada. Right. And then all these anti iskon guys become the disciples of Tamal by saying, oh, Ritvik, Ritvik, Ritvik. But Ritvik means Tamal Krishna. Or mm -hmm. reads essentially Narayan Maharaj, because Narayan Maharaj and Tamal Krishna, as far as I'm concerned, were the brains behind Prabhupada's poisoning. Other people just took part. So they're all disciples of Narayan Maharaj and Tamal Krishna, rather than saying officiating the Charya, which is what Prabhupada said, it doesn't sound quite that powerful, does it? Mm -hmm. 
as Ritvik. Mm -hmm. Right. He's a Ritvik. What does that mean? It means bow down immediately, you know. But if a Fijian Acharya, that sounds sweet, like a, like a silk, a, 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 a cushion full of goose down covered with silk. Officiating Acharya. Doesn't that sound smooth and delicious and nice? Yeah, sounds much better than Ritvik. Yeah. Okay. If you look up Ritvik, you'll see that it's a yeah, very common yeah. name in India, too. Right. And it's a okay. common name amongst Muslims. Okay, number five. Can we agree that nothing done in the name of ISKCON, headed by the illegal GBC, has any value? to the restoration of ISKCON as solely created and envisioned by our founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada. Well, we can see right now what they're doing with our friends in India, which we talked to, and the various people we have talked to. They're just doing damage control right now because the female Diksha Guru is a hot topic, and then the whole Guru thing is a hot, hot topic, meaning that some people are questioning the qualifications of the guru. So whatever they have done, they have illegally done everything and uh, created a uh, faction. You know. Yeah. Oh. So that statement clearly states that, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That statement, right? And the and the whole problem is once you have created an illegal GBC, everything they do after that is illegal. Right, right. Even if it's well intentioned, even if it works, even if it's intelligent, even if it goes by Shastra. And once you've broken the relationship with the spiritual master, everything you do after that is simply putting a patch on the patch on the patch on the patch of a tire that's still leaking. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what they did when, uh, when Bhagavan fell down, some new guy flew in and consoled the devotees and uh, some of them got reinitiated. Some of them were told that hey, you take Prabhupada as your guru. Even now, the GBC has a, a resolution that if your, you know, your illegal guru falls down, you either can take reinitiation or you can jump on another guru. <laughs> and uh, we have no responsibility to to you if your other guru falls down. Also, you know. Yeah, but now interesting factor. If your guru falls down, if you've given your karma, if you've given yourself to your initiating guru, which is what you're supposed to do when you take diksha, right? Right. You give your life to your guru. Yes. Does anyone in this gun say when you take initiation from a Iskand guru that you do not give your life to that guru? The guru becomes the life and soul of the disciple. Even in this gun today. No, no, no. I'm saying I'm that about it's gone today. Oh, oh, I'm not sure what they say because, yeah, a, a lot of these people don't even follow the instructions of their gurus. I think. <laughs> it's not even that. I'm talking about. Do you? Do you? It's just like when a child takes birth in the takes is conceived in the womb of a woman. Right. He's bound. Right hand and foot right to be her child yes do you see what i mean yes he belongs to that woman yes so when you take diksha isn't it like being conceived you belong to that guru yeah just it like does. a child in the womb right. belongs to his mother yes yes this is a tough point i mean I could, I could have put that in even longer document, but these are things to be understood. What is the exact position of the... They don't even bother talking about it because for them it's just a political arrangement. That's what it is. It's a business arrangement or a, a business... Yeah, but does the guru take on the karma? Well, look at Bhagavan. Yeah. He's a, what's an exceptional and brilliant, wonderful devotee yes. who... Was one of my, I empowered him hmm. in Detroit because right. I could see. I, I empowered him. What could I do? I gave him the key how to become 
fully self-empowered. Hmm. Because I could see he could do it. But look what right. he did. He goes becomes a guru. Next thing you know, he's falling down with other people's wives. Hare Krishna. So why? He took on the karma of the people initiated. Right. Like that gay devotee. Uh, uh, Rohini Kumar. He, not Rohini Kumar. He took on a bunch of gay disciples. Well, it was sort of cute because they were all, you know, very into being the role of disciple. But then I heard him talking and he began to talk like a gay person. And then when he fell down, he went into a gay community. YMCA, you know, like that. He went into a gay community, took on gay YMCA. tattoos. But he wasn't like that before he, when he was 18, 20. He was like that after he took on the karma of gay people. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. That's. <laughs> so I'm talking, this is another topic. It's not on this page. Right. Uh, but right. It, it's the topic is implied on this page. If the guru takes on your karma, then if he falls down, what happens to you? What happens to him? What happens to his karma? Yeah. What happens to your karma that you gave him? Right. He goes to Prabhupada? Then they don't even care. They don't even think. They have no inkling. So keep going. So I don't want to take up your time. All right. So who's here? Let me check the participants. Vinay Prabhu, if you want to say anything, Mahaprabhu is there. Anyone else? On our online audience, if they want to make a comment, please make a comment. We'll go through the comments at the last few minutes. And... And if they want to send us a message, please send us a message. We have a WhatsApp group in the description. You can join and then participate live, just like we're doing here. All right. So let me continue reading. Yes. Uh, we are at number, number six. Okay. How many birds do you expect that it will take for each of us to perfect the Kanishta Madhyam and then the Uttamadakari? platforms right Most people think i'll die i'll go to heaven huh. you know when i end of this life then yeah. well christian will reach down and pick me up yeah yeah and that's not how it works that's not yeah. well yeah. if it what does then you could become a, a bug on his shirt you know? <laughs> right but if you want a real rasa with christian you better not fall for that one yeah, it's all about the relationship, but people can't develop that relationship so instantly. Or, I mean, come on. Yeah, you can't you can't develop a relationship without relating. Right. I mean, if you're going to make friends with a friend, a person, a human being, can you make friends with that person all by yourself? No, you got to have something in common. You got to do, you know, exchanges. Exchanges, yeah. In friendship, it's loving exchanges. Yeah. And in the lecture of instruction, it discuss, discusses the six loving exchanges. Yes. Yeah, giving of, important part of the soul. Yeah, giving of gifts, so, revealing your mind. I think prashadam, giving gifts. So all of that has to be developed before you can get a parasa with Krishna and Krishna Loka. Chai. Okay. Number seven. Since having already heard the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, our going back, uh, our going back to our rasa with Krishna and Krishna Loka is assured. Do we agree that when we reach spiritual perfection, we will have the opportunity to choose, in consultation with Lord Krishna, to take repeated births during the golden age of Kali for the sole purpose of making sure that every jiva in the golden age of Kali can hear the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra at least once, regardless of species. Jai. So I'm suggesting, what if a person becomes an Uttamadakari on earth, or a Madhimadakari about to become an Uttamadakari on earth in golden age of Kali? Does that mean he should rush to get the hell out of here? Or will he say, my dear Krishna, please empower me to be here, to deliver these souls. I was nobody. I was going to go to hell. And I chanted Hare Krishna once. 
and then I chanted it again and again. Now I'm chanting to everyone that will listen. Now, if I'm chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, uh, uh, I'm chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, why would I want to stop? If I reach perfection, why don't I stay here and help others? You know, nobody's thinking like that. Everyone's thinking, how the hell do I get out of here? Or how do I, or like a Catholic, how do I die and go to heaven? That's the whole reason that Christianity caught on is you accept Jesus, you die, you go to heaven. It's sort of a pain-free experience. So yeah, keep going. Okay, so where are we at? We're at, uh, okay, number eight. Can we agree as the leak for 10K that the remaining, that remaining on this planet Earth to be sure that every creature, regardless of species, will have the opportunity to hear the Hare Krishna sound vibration even once? Jai, that's why Prabhupada wanted this chanting to go on in you know, every town and village and, you know. But, and, but, it, but they think what's, what it calls for here is us, you, me. Right and everyone else on this call, to make a vow, yes, I will volunteer. I volunteer to stay here until the end of the Golden Age of Kali. Never mind my trying to skedaddle out of here. I will remain till the end of the Golden Age of Kali because I'm grateful for having been delivered. I'm grateful for having been given the holy name so that I will go back to Godhead. How can I be such a selfish SOB that I don't care about anybody else now? Right. Right. I'm just putting that out. I'm not saying anybody should adopt the notion that they want to stay here for another 9,500 years. Although I could make the cute assumption, the cutest assumption that, uh, that if anyone doesn't want to stay here for 9,500 years, it might take them 9,500 years to purify themselves to the point of going back to Godhead. Wow. How many births before a person gives up their selfishness? Selfishness means I want perfection, I, nobody else. But what is the quality of a pure devotee? Causeless mercy, right? Yes. Prabhupada didn't come to planet Earth to become a rich guru. He came here and was tortured by his disciples and everybody <laughs> else for that matter. Right. And he said so. He, he, he announced it. But we were just thinking, good, Jesus, the more Jesus suffers, the more I'm saved. That's what the, when the Mel Gibson made the, the, uh, the, um, the last days of Christ, or the temptation of Christ, that people watched it and saw Jesus being beaten while dragging his cross. And the more he was beaten, the better they liked it. Can you imagine? Here's a yeah. poor devotee dedicated to saving you. Why were they so pleased to see Jesus accepting extreme and extraordinary suffering? Which I'm comparing to Prabhupada. Why? Why did they take such satisfaction in seeing that torture? They're Christians. You should think of they'd be horrified, right? They'd be weeping, they'd be begging, they'd flung themselves on the ground saying, beat me, not him. Well, why did they why did they enjoy it so much? Relish it. Do you know why? Because they're psychopaths. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, naturally. But the reason that they gave, and this is what they said, not I'm not analyzing them. They said, when I saw how much Jesus was being tortured, I realized that whatever sins I have committed are less than the things he was tortured. Therefore, his suffering is greater than my sins. Therefore, I will be saved. The more he suffered, the more surely I am saved. Mm. Interesting. Isn't that a weird relationship to your spiritual master? Yeah, very, very. 
weird. He that's took out the sins of the world. Tend to be. Huh? Mahaprabhu? Mahaprabhu, you said something. Yes, sir. Prabhu. Okay, well, yeah, what did you say? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. I said Christ took on the sins of the world. Yes. He took on the sins of the world. And the people for whom he took on the sins took great pleasure that he suffered for them. Because the more he suffered, the more likely it was that their horrible sin was also forgiven. At I don't, least that's I don't the conclusion think, of the temptation of Christ. I don't think that's the case of the, his close circle. Who knows? His close, Who knows circle is, right. his, his close circle is more than a billion people. I think modern age man takes pleasure in the fact that he took on their sins. But I think his close circle, they were what very sorrowful. Close circle? What close circle? His apostles, his disciples, his followers, his mom. Where was they dad. at the crucifixion? Say it again. Where were they at the crucifixion? They were there. No, they weren't. They were hiding. The disciples were not present at the crucifixion. Mother very Mary and Mary Magdalene were present at the crucifixion. Yeah, what? or they, they would they would have gotten killed as well. Yeah, and they didn't want that for them because they didn't want to be hurt. Jesus well, could be tortured to death, but they didn't give a rat. You know what? They didn't they care. Had, they wanted was him to, to suffer for them, not that they would have to suffer with him. Hare Krishna. Is that a fact? Read your Bible. I don't know about facts. Read the Bible. I don't say the Bible's facts. I don't say it. That's what it says in the Bible. Okay, okay let, let's continue. Well, anyhow, what I'm pointing out is Prabhupada suffered for our sins. And okay. is still suffering for our sins. So keep going. Okay, we're at number nine. How many births do you anticipate that it will take for us to reach the perfectional stage of Uta Madhukari? Which is the basic which is the basic requirement for being able to enter Krishna Loka you know in your in our eternal rasa with Krishna. How long will it take? Okay. I ask I asked our friend in India that he said, I can't even plan beyond the next week or two. How can I plan on ahead like that? What does he think? What does he think? He's a devotee. He's, he's a big shot in this gun. He's doing all of the stuff. What does he think? He's just not thinking. How long will it take before I can become a pure devotee? Mm -hmm. and yeah. if, the, if he does think, he'll say, oh, at the end of my lifetime, for sure. Or maybe sooner. Or he will say maybe two or three births. How do you know? How do you how, what's your measuring device? Your measuring tape. Measure it. Tell me what the measurement says. How long will it take for you to become a pure devotee? May I ask? Well, I have no way of knowing. And yet you're living as though you know. You're living your life as though you have complete knowledge and that you can guide the lives of others. You can tell other people to surrender to this guy or the other guy, whether or not they're qualified or not. You can do all of those things. You can talk about getting Shastra that Prabhupada didn't write and trying to figure out Prabhupada from that Shastra. You can figure out all of that stuff if you don't know how long it's going to take for you to go back to become a pure devotee. I mean, this is crazy. This is, again, like the Catholic Church. You die and then you'll go to heaven if you've been baptized and take the last sacraments. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, but okay. do you see how big a deal that is? It's such a big deal that we're not even grasping it ourselves right now. Yeah, it's it's a huge deal to... to... Yeah. Look at every devotee you've ever met and ask yourself or ask him, 
How many births before you become a pure devotee? Is that ever discussed amongst the gurus? Nobody knows. Discussed? Nobody knows. Yeah, but they should have some idea, right? It may be an individual thing. It is an individual thing. But they still should have a sense of direction. Most, wouldn't you say most Catholics believe that when you die, you go to heaven? You go to purgatory first. Well, whatever. But you end up in heaven eventually. Well, not necessarily. You can stay in purgatory for eternity? <laughs> Depending on your actions. Nothing depends on salvation. But then again, God is all merciful and all forgiving. Okay, so what does the Catholic Church say about salvation if you if you've accepted the blood of christ and the body of christ to eat and if you have uh, taken baptism and if you've taken the lost rites and sac and you're buried in sac sanctified grounds when does the catholic believe he's going back to going to join jesus in heaven yeah. what does he say to so say this at the end of the, I mean, I've say, heard Catholics even talk about their dogs going to heaven. I know to say it is one thing, but to do it is another. And what do they what do they say about doing or do about saying? They don't say anything about doing. They say about going without doing. Okay, how I don't want to take too far much into this, but how many Catholics do you know whose parents? or relatives died that didn't say he's gone to heaven. That's correct. I agree with you. Yes. So are they bullshitting themselves or are they ignorant or is it true? Could be all of the above. No, it can't. What can it be? It can be a complete mistake because if, I mean, does anyone, I don't want to get off the track, but you know the Christian, Christian heaven is in the material universe, don't you? It's a heavenly Say, planet. Let's, uh, let's, heavenly, uh, earthly and let's keep on our paper. Or we can discuss that okay. offline because we want to finish our yeah, discussion. The boss, the boss. Chai. Achai. <laughs> the boss. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, Achai. Achai. Carry on, carry on. Strongly. I recommend strongly that you look at your own scripture and talk to your own priests and ask them those questions. Try okay. not just making it up as you go along. You right. are my priest now. Well, you don't want that if you're a Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're gonna take you're gonna take on my sins, Nayan Narayan. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm pretty safe for now because first you have to surrender. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Amen. So I'm not taking on any sins yet, but I'd be glad to. When the time comes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's Take carry care. on. Okay, Amen. so so there's this katha in a lecture in Bombay in 1974. Shri Prabhupada gave a lecture that basically. By the way, make sure everyone is listening to this. Okay, this is one of the most important lectures I've ever. Perhaps the most important lecture I've ever heard Prabhupada give. And okay. I wish I could do the whole thing, but it would take half an hour. Keep going. Okay. Kata, in a lecture in Bombay in 1974, Sri Prabhupada gave a lecture that basically was so intense that it practically burned the paint off the walls. He By spoke, the way, I should make one little comment. It sure. wasn't a lecture, public lecture. It was <sighs> householders, brahmacharis, and brahmacharis, and sannyasis. Totally maybe 20 people. So it wasn't a big lecture, big lecture. Keep going. Okay. He spoke so, out about the thing. The paint on the wall? Huh? Like, the, the lecture uh, that, that burnt the paint on the wall? Well, no, I'm just saying like that. It's just a, it, it, it was a scorching lecture. Oh, okay. Metaphor. 
psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually scorching. Okay. The, wall, the paint didn't come off the wall. He spoke out about the things that a devotee does not want. Neti, neti. We are all, we all nearly fainted from the power of his words. A devotee does not want this. A devotee does not want that. He systematically eliminated anything and everything that a devotee could possibly want. Starting the end, with the, the householders began to squirm when he was saying what a devotee does not want. And the brahmacharis, the sannyasis were grinning at them. And then the next thing is the, the brahmacharis started sweating bricks and the sannyasis were grinning at them. In the end, nobody was grinning. Everybody was just aghast, horrified. Anyway, right. I thought I just said that a little bit. In the end, we all simultaneously reached the only option that we had left on the table. We all concluded, oh yeah, a devotee wants Krishna. Srila Prabhupada roared like a lion. And a devotee does not even want Krishna. We all nearly passed out. Srila Prabhupada continues, who am, I, who am I to associate with Krishna? Let him play with the gopis and let me stay here and serve him. If we can adopt that mood now, then our rapid spiritual perfection will be assured. And by 5,000 years from now, Srila Prabhupada will be the was emblazoned, emblazoned, fully effulgent central figure of the ISKCON that we, the League for 10K, have restored and perfected for the reminder of the golden age of Kali. And each of us will have, will have had the pleasure of delivering unlimited fallen conditioned souls by sharing the transcendental Hare Krishna sound vibration with every jiva in every town and village. Do you agree? Please give your deepest consideration. Try. All right. So you see, for all those people that are dying to go back to God, it says, and a devotee, uh, did I say devotee or Vaishnav? You said devotee, I think. Okay. I, I don't know if he said the Buddha, I think he said, said Vaishnava. And a Vaishnava does not even want Krishna, he cries right. out. You see, right. Everyone has come to the point where there's nothing left but Krishna. And we're just sitting there like beyond sweating. It's like we've practically lost, our blood has stopped flowing in our veins. We're so completely, we're in the middle of the, four in the morning in, in Bombay in the, on the ocean side in a in a, in a barren sort of building that has no furniture. And everybody does not even, and he said, but well, this, he doesn't want that, you know, talk about what householders get and what dormitories get. Then sannyasis don't get anything. Well, yeah, he took away everything that sannyasis typically get. They were horrified. And they we were all sitting there just dumbfounded. What could a devotee possibly want? And Prabhupada was looking there like, like Parsaram looking over the dead bodies of all the chatriyas or a lion looking over a dozen deer that he's just killed. And he's looking there with the blood on his jaw, looking at all the dead deer. And then all of a sudden, all of us, didn't matter, Brahmachrini, Brahmachari, householder, sannyasi, it didn't matter who they were. Everyone suddenly went, bing! Of course! A devotee doesn't want any of these things. He's taking it down way through the astral plane, the subtle plane, down to practically the edge of existence itself. But a devotee, what's Krishna? You know, we all were thinking that at once. You could tell because the people were so destroyed, they could read their faces. And then Prabhupada said, and a devotee does not even want Krishna. He said like that, you know, powerful. And the devotee, the, our, our Vaishnava, our devotee does not even want Krishna. Mm. And it was like, it, could, it was like you could hear the feel, hear the jaws hitting the floor. <laughs> Everybody at once 
had their correct answer taken away from them. Of course a devotee wants Krishna. And Prabhupada says, and a devotee does not even want Krishna. But here's the point that I brought this all up for, for this meeting and for this writing and for the League for 10K, which is what this is about. He said, let Krishna play with Gopi. The devotee does not even want Krishna. Let him play with gopis. And let me, he said, stay here and starve him. It was just an amazing event. But that's our movement. That's the thing for 10K. A devotee doesn't even want Krishna. Let me, let him play with gopis. And let me stay here and serve him. So do you think we can build our League for 10K on the vow that we do not even want Krishna? We were prepared to stay here and serve him. Of course, if we become pure devotees and Krishna says, time for you to come to Vrindavan, we're not going to say no. But can we be prepared to say yes? Or can we volunteer like a suicide mission? <coughs> like that, you know what I mean? Can we be prepared to say, I will take as many births as it takes to complete the 10,000 years of the golden age of Kali. If I become an Uttamadakari in 10 lifetimes, I have a choice, maybe. Because if I become an Uttamadakari, then I'm in conversation with Krishna, right? If I'm in conversation with Krishna, do I say, well, Krishna, I don't want to be down there with all these Assholes, I want to be with you. I don't think that would quite get you there to Krishna Loka. You have to be with Krishna and say, here I am. I've Now I'm in your association, my dear Krishna. And Prabhupada was here, and he was in your direct association, my dear Krishna. He was with you, I'm with you. Should I stay or not? And you will work that out with Krishna himself the way Prabhupada worked out his kind with Krishna himself. Does that make sense? Yes. Where did Ramachandra go? Well, I'm here. I was just looking at the messages. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Any, any messages? Let me check. I was just checking. Hold on. Let me see. Um, we have Vinayak Prabhu, Mahaprabhu, Mohit. Just any questions, comments, doubts, anything you guys want to share, please go ahead. No, no questions or comments online. So let's keep going. So then why don't we open this up for open discussion? We have like 25, 23 more minutes. Why, why don't we open it up for discussion and you handle the whole thing? I will simply listen. Okay. Bring up the ideas. I mean, what are the ideas? Are you willing to take birth until the end of the golden age of Kali out of gratitude for what Chaitanya having delivered you or not? <laughs> Try it. Everyone must be. That's the mood of the Vaishnava, that they want to yeah. help. And but we're not Vaishnavas others. yet. We're neophytes. But yeah, as we're... we become more Vaishnavas, the mood will be there more yeah. and more, not less and less. Right. Try it. They, they want to give. They always want to give. Uh, Hare Krishna Mohit Prabhu. Yes, you, you have My, to go? Yeah, Hari Bol. I need to go. I am very blessed to have all your associations, right? Especially Naranayan Prabhu giving time to us. Mahaprabhu's blessings. Chai. Chai. Yeah. Did you like that? Did you like that paper? Of course, Prabhu. That was simply blank on target, right? If someone wants to do uh, bhakti, that's the purest thing which we can offer them, right? Yes. Rather than but talking I'd like nonsense. to mention to you before you go, and you have to go right away, that yeah. <laughs> I'd like to mention that what was written in that paper has not been considered for even two minutes by anybody in ISKCON. They won't do it, Prabhu, because they are behind money and power, no? So yes. it's okay. It's yeah. their problem. So that, I mean, they won't, right. don't want, we to... want to create this because the people that will like this maybe haven't joined yet, or would like to join, but don't like what's going on, or have joined and have taken initiation and don't like the way they're being treated. Then they'll say, this sounds better. 
let's go for this. Yeah, bro, sure. Hare Krishna, bhai. Hare Krishna, bro. 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 Hare Maybe I'll I'll do it from directly from uh, Vrindavan. I'll sure show you that the temple devotee is there, and I'll hey. be going to do Vrindavan tomorrow. Great idea. Try. To look forward to it. Sure. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Bye, guys. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Bye. Hare Bol. Hare Krishna. Hare Bol. Prabhu. Hare Bol. Hare Krishna. Jai. All right. So uh, we have about. Twenty minutes till ten o'clock. Oh, Robert Shonda, this is what I wanted last night to be like. Well, but every time I brought brought something up, the guy that's running the show said, mm-hmm. "Let Let Panchali speak. Let Panchali." She was going on and on and on because you she got, was. I, I don't know what got, she was saying, but I understand that she was just saying this kind of it. She's you my beloved s- associate. Yes, Mahaprabhu, you want to say something? Go ahead. I want to say that he got slammed by Jai Narayan. He's lucky he's in his car tonight. <laughs> I wanted him to be here to hear this. I wanted him. I wanted him to be here tonight as well. Yes, but anyhow, you can let me have Jai Narayan's email, and I'll send him an email. But uh, do you think mm. this is a lot to ask, Ramachandra, because he's your guest? But is there a chance that you could go over those points with China Ryan in a conversation, like a mini session? Well, I can ask him. Not, not tonight. Not tonight. Yeah, not tonight. Tomorrow, when you know, you know, he's a he's a very aloof person, so. He sometimes sleeps in the house. Sometimes sleeps in the car. So wherever he is, he is tonight. I'll mention it to him, and then we're going to discuss it tomorrow. Oh, well, you don't have to. Do, not tonight. Not tomorrow even. But it would be okay. nice if tomorrow. Tomorrow yeah. would be nice. Try. Okay. Let's Give see. Give him Vinay- our regards. Hmm? Give him our regards. Okay. I, I will do our that. Our obeisances. Try. I will do that. Thank Jai. you. So All right. You, so, okay. mm-hmm. oh, I'm sorry. You're Go trying ahead. to say something. No. Okay. What I would like to say is, do you think that these points address the issues that caused us to create the league for 10K? Address the issues. That yeah. Caused us to create the league for 10K. Yeah, people. <laughs> yeah, people don't ask these types of questions. I mean, I. I'm a very introspective person, so these things make sense to me because I think for the future, you know, not just ten years, twenty years. I'm thinking about my previous, you know, my previous life, my future, you know, embodiment, and what I want to be doing. You know, not just right now, in the present. Right. So, if we are spirit souls, we should have these questions. That okay, I'm. Aspiring to be a devotee right now, I'm doing all this, but you know, am I very close to perfection? I'm very far away from perfection. You know, these things are up to the individual to think about. And it is, but at another point of that being close or far from perfection is, are you doing the needful? Yes. Like I, yes. I would say, this league for 10K is the most needed thing on planet Earth right now. Hmm. The most needed thing. Hmm. Because who else will do it? Yes, people don't, you know, people. <laughs> I mean, the word League for 10K is not just a cute thing. League for 10K means this is the Boy Scouts leading, or the Sherpas leading you up the hill and layers for te- to the end of 10K. Hmm. It's just not a statement. It is a essentially a in the beginning of something like a Masonic order or something of that sort, you know, where you are, are creating a, a brotherhood. 
Well, league is a brotherhood. We're creating a brotherhood of those who are willing to deliver the fallen souls on planet Earth for mm -hmm. the next, till the end of the golden age of Kali. Whether you go back to Godhead when you leave your body in whatever 20, 30, 40 years, or whether you go, go whether you say, I refuse to go back to Godhead until they are, well, these souls are delivered. As you know, I already made the vow more than once in San Francisco in 1968. I said, I will not leave until everyone is delivered. I was just a new brahmachari. So that's my position. We, oh, we have but some- I comments. invite everyone to join me on that, in that mood. We have some comments from our good devotee friend, Bhanu Prabhu, he made on on YouTube, so let me share that here. Yes, please do. Okay, where is Banu Prabhu? Okay, um, let's see. Uh, Did he Banu hear Prabhu, of that? Do you think? Huh? Did he hear the lecture? He, I'm not sure if he heard, but he made a comment that. Uh, remember the part you were saying that the devotee doesn't want this, devotee doesn't want that. And at that time, Bhanu, I guess, commented, and the devotee doesn't even need Nara Narayan. <laughs> he said that in the on the screen. Yeah. So and then and then Koshal Prabhu says, humble pranams to you all pure devotees here. <laughs> pure devotees. Yeah, right. And then Bhanu Prabhu also mentioned. Manu Prabhu is saying, Prabhupada and even Krishna doesn't interfere with the independence of a jiva and their desire. And then he further comments, Nara Narayan Prabhu, keep your desires to yourself and don't enforce them, telling jivas to stay in the material world for 10k years on others. Prabhupada was encouraging devotees to go back to Godhead, this life itself. Okay. Does, then, have a ski, does Banu have a guaranteed system for doing that? And if he wants to go back to Godhead, in what rasa will he be with Krishna? Or doesn't he want to be in a rasa with Krishna? Yeah, Banu Prabhu maybe can come on the call and participate yeah. if he wants. If Banu wants to go back to Godhead and without a specific rasa, then he can become Shanta Rasa. He can become a grain of sand. Hmm. Will that be satisfying? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Banu Prabhu. You know, everybody's fantasizing dancing with gopis or playing with coward boys, but nobody thinks about being a grain of sand on the bank of the Jumuna River in Vrindavan, the Goloka. The, the, the Shanta Rasa means passive. So if you don't have an active relationship with Krishna, you will have a passive relationship with Krishna if you go back to Godhead. And you can go back to Godhead with a passive relationship. Why not? Can you imagine how many grains of sand there are in the unlimited banks of the Jumuna River in Krishna Loka? Right. So he can say anything he likes about Narayan trying to get people to stick around. But all I can say is the odds are, if you do stick around, the odds are that you will have a higher level of rasa as a result. Chai. And then Koshal yeah. Prabhu saying... Because you're working it out with Krishna while you're here. Mm. If you're a pure mm. devotee and you're here, if you're an Uttamadakari and you still remain Prabhupada state on planet Earth as an Uttamadakari, I mean, he could have said, heck with it, these people are a bunch of jerks, I'm leaving. But he didn't. He said, stayed until they tortured him until he was gone, forced him out of his body. And there's well, some, more, some more comments here. Uh, sure. Koshal Prabhu replied to Bhanu Prabhu. He said, of course, we could go to Godhead in this life itself, but the earth will remain. People will be stuck in Maya. For their benefit, this league for 10K is important. And then Bhanu Prabhu said, the holy name will keep delivering people rather than getting puffed up that leak for 10K will deliver people. 
No, the holy name delivers people, but who is going to deliver the holy name? Who's going to chant the holy name? Who's going out in the streets and making sure that the trees and the moss on the rocks and the and the bugs and the animals are all hearing? Who's going to do that? It's not going to do it by itself. The holy name is not going to go out and chant itself to everybody. You have to chant the holy name. That's your participation. That's what gets you involved in Krishna Loka. Chanting Hare Krishna is what they do in Krishna Loka. But here we want to not do that. Become more advanced by not chanting Hare Krishna. In so then, such a way that every bug can hear you, every rock. Can every worm under every rock can hear you? Every tree can hear you? So that's what I'm saying, League of 10K. He says, League of 10K is going to deliver everybody. Not at all. The Holy Name is going to deliver everybody. But if the whole League for 10K chants Hare Krishna, what's the bad part, according to Banu? What's the bad part if the Holy Name is chanted by the League of 10K? Right. And then Bhanu Prabhu further said, pure devotees will keep coming to uplift the society and deliver people. As there are many, many now, Bhagavad Gita says, one in a million becomes a pure devotee. Okay. Can Bhanu kindly make a list of, say, maybe 50 of them right now for us? <laughs> Then Koshla Prabhu, like he's saying that he's saying, is he an authority? Is, is he is he a, a a a muse? Is he a prophet? Is he Vedas? If you know this, why be selfish? Write down their names right now, and we'll find them. <laughs> he said, why he says greedy? that why be greedy? Why not let us know who they are? You say they will come. You say, on your authority, I don't know where it's written that they will come, but you say, and therefore, I accept your word, show me, where are they? He says that the Bhagavad Gita says that one in a million becomes a pure devotee. Is that true? That's a very complicated question. One in a million becomes a true devotee. One of a million people on earth or one of a million devotees on earth? Uh, that's a good question. Yes. My understanding of that quote is that of it's not just one in a million, it's a whole verse. <laughs> Practically all the Krishna so, so, conscious so, so, people today are one in a million. Uh -huh. you know that one. Who, who's, who's, who's speaking? Vinyak. Sharma. Vinyak. Yes. Vinyak. Vinyak. Okay, yeah. So do you know that shloka? It's, it's, a, it's a shloka in which it enumerates pretty much everything on earth. And then the devotee, one in a million becomes a pure devotee, but a one of a million out of which category of, of devotee? I mean, Good point. One out of a million people that have chanted Hare Krishna once, or one out of a million people that have taken many births as rishis? So can we say we're pure devotees yet? In one sense, anyone who hears the holy name is a pure devotee. That's guaranteed. However, we are only pure devotees when we not only have no material desire, but that we have a relationship, a kinetic rasa with Krishna that we can experience with Krishna reciprocally. Jai. You might you might say, are you a pure lover of Jesus yet? Well, what? If you're a pure lover of Jesus in the sense of being a pure devotee, what did Jesus say to you? And what did you say to Jesus? And how does he relate to you? Does, does he run with you in the fields of the of Swargaloka? What what does Jesus what did Jesus and you do? Mm. You see? But they don't, Christians don't even think like that. They think Jesus is the son of God. He's up there with nails sticking out of his arms and legs. And <clears throat> with blood running down his face from the thorns, crown of thorns, and a hole in his side where, where um, 
What's the, what was the name of the, the name of the centurion is, um, who stabbed him? It was Lontinus. Lontinus stabbed him with a spear that became the, known as the Spear of Destiny, or the Spear of Lontinus. So Lontinus was a centurion working for the Pope, uh, working, not the Pope, <laughs> for the Greek Pope, meaning the Caesar. He was, Lontinus was working for Caesar, and he ended up being the one to stab Jesus. Interestingly, he became a disciple of Jesus. So there's many people that have considered, did he stab Jesus to kill him, or did he stab Jesus to make sure he was still alive? In other words, there are those who say Jesus did not die on the cross, but he was unconscious. Oh, yeah, how did he become unconscious? Well, he, had, he was thirsty, so they put a sponge in his mouth, right? And what was on the sponge? Arrowhead water or possibly a sedative that knocked him out, made him look dead. And then he was put on the shroud of Turin and taken to the tomb of the high placed Roman who had become his disciple. And the shroud was, he was lying on it and it was folded down over his head down to his feet. So the shroud of Turin is a mirror image of Jesus' face. You can take it, and they have taken it, and done a complete reverse photography thing of it, and come out with Jesus' face. If it really is Jesus' face, of course, there's questions that it could be something that was done later, ceremonial, fake, whatever. But let's say it's real for the moment. And what is the distinguishing feature of the Shroud of Turin is that the image is created from the perspiration of Jesus. So if the perspiration would came from the perspiration, if the image, the photographic sort of negative came from the <coughs> body of Jesus from perspiration, sweat, <coughs> that means he wasn't dead. So when he was taken into the tomb, they rolled the rock in front, and then the next day was the Sabbath. And the angels showed up, but the angels were how they, they this is, you know, their speculation, not mine. They said that the angels that came, they said were uh, Athenes. They were it's, it's angels because they were so austere and angelic and they were vegetarian, and some were like that and very thin, so that the angels that they saw were the people that rolled the rock away, and that Jesus walked, coming down off the drugs they gave him, walked out of the tomb with Doubting Thomas and a few others, and Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene, and walked all the way to Kashmir, where there's the tomb halfway along dedicated to Mother Mary. We have about two minutes. What? We have about two minutes. Okay. Is that enough then on the topic? Yes. Okay. So what do you want to say? Well, we had a wonderful meeting, and then there was one last comment by Banu Prabhu. I'll read it, and then we can end it there. Okay, read the last comment of Banu. Banu Prabhu is saying, Rasa is developed Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, or Madhurya is developed with Krishna by chanting Japa. Japa is the highest service. Where did Prabhupada ever say that? Yeah. He didn't say that. He never said that. Huh. Sati is passive rasa. Mm. If, you if you die and go to heaven, you become a grain of sand, meaning in Krishna Loka. <laughs> And you cannot cultivate Madhurya Rasa <coughs> by chanting Japa. 
Mm. That's called sahaja. Or it's also called sex, it's called sex desire. Mm. Prabhupada made all of this clear. I don't know where Banu is getting his information, but it's not from Prabhupada's writings, nor is it from Prabhupada's lectures. <clears throat> My recommendation is Read Prabhupada's books, listen to his lectures, listen to his kirtans, and you will get the real rasa. He was an Uttamadakari. I don't know anyone else that was an Uttamadakari that you can say is alive today. Mm -hmm. Who's a an Uttamadakari today? One out of a million, okay? Count on your fingers, and then mm -hmm. when you're finished counting, um, when you count, keep counting a million uh, several times over, you'll end up with maybe three or four fingers to count on that are the pure devotees. Where are they? And let's meet them. So what okay. else would Banu say? So we're at 10 o'clock. So if Banu wants to get in contact with us, he knows how to get in contact with us. Yeah. Or, if he or has anyone person, else. Would you would you allow him another question or st statement if he wants to make one more? Well, he hasn't posted anything, so I don't I don't see he has any question. He knows how to contact us. Oh, and he makes the last comment: "Glories to Narayan Prabhu, one who can twist and turn words in order to get agenda leak 10k going, changing words like a chameleon." <laughs> I don't know what what he's saying, what he means, but he says I can I can change. I'm a shape changer. I can change anything, change my shape in, in any sort of way to make a point that's not valid. He's saying I'm telling bogus and I'm twisting words and twisting logic and philosophy to get to the false conclusions. Well, if he's thinking that, then he should come have a discussion with us. Not... I would agree. We, why don't we invite Banu to come on? Yeah, so Banu is Banu is always invited. He knows that. But... And Banu has to watch out. There's something I read, which is sort of funny. Uh, that if, you know, they say that uh, uh, <laughs> if a clown is put on the throne, he does not become a king but the palace becomes a circus <laughs> so we welcome Bonner to come and sit on the throne with his red nose and whatnot so he can become the king of the circus here okay thank you Banu Prabhu for joining and listening feel free to contact me or Narayan he doesn't Prabhu. have one he doesn't have one last nasty thing to say or a dig to <laughs> a knife to put between my ribs. Where is what's wrong with him? Why doesn't he have another knife? I've got more ribs. <laughs> one more huh. one more nasty comment, please. Let's see if he has any, any more comments. I don't think he has. It says Iron Ryan is begging for another nasty comment. <laughs> he says, Good luck for you to stay for the next 9,450 years. And then Koshal Prabhu says, Glories to Nara Narayan Prabhu. All right. So thank you very much, Manu Prabhu, and anyone who's watching. Please join us again tomorrow. Glories to Koshal Prabhu. And oh, what no, Manu needs to understand is what does he want to be in Krishna Loka? He can chant Japa or do whatever he likes. He can stand on his head. But what does he want to be in relation to Krishna and Krishna Loka? <laughs> <coughs> that is what he should be asking himself and others. Practically, like from my case, like we have not even uh, established the proper Shraddha. What to say about having a Sadhu Sangha with Srila Prabhupada? Exactly. But he should try to calculate what does he want in Krishna Loka? What does Banu want in Krishna Loka? Banu wants to chant Japa in Krishna Loka. <laughs> Oh. Well, maybe he'll become a Tulsi plant and chant on his own twigs. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Haribol, thank you to all the devotees for joining. Tell, tell, tell Bono 
I really appreciated his comment because I needed comic relief. Chai. Or should I say karmic relief? <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. What, what, yeah. How do we meet next? When do we meet next? Narnaran Prabhu is very tomorrow? tolerant. <laughs> when do we meet next, Prabhu <laughs> uh, Tomorrow. 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 There's, tomorrow's another meeting. And then uh, um, uh, who's going to be hosting? Uh, um, you. Aren't you going to be hosting? 